out of me Oh, Hank made it here We're all sure that you will But I don't think Hank done it this way I don't think Hank done it this way Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the Waylon Jennings classic. Are you sure Hank done it this way? It's a fantastic song for beginners. Just two chords all of the way through A and D. Coincidentally, the first chords that I teach on my beginner course. Remember, if you want some play along stuff, do go and check out my app as well. Playing along if you're a beginner with this kind of stuff is so much more fun than just playing on your own with no backing or whatever. And often singing and playing at the same time is difficult as a beginner. So do go and check out my app. There'll be a link in the description or a card up in the corner there. So there are a few reasons this song is so great for beginners. The first one, obviously, it's just got two chords, but the rhythm is real simple as well. You can start off with just one strum on each chord. Each chord is held for just one bar, but later on you can also very clearly hear on the original recording that the four down strums on the beat. So when you get into doing the four down strums to the bar as well, it's a really good song for that as well. So first thing you need to know, if you're going to play along with the original recording, you need to put a capo or capo on there at the second fret. It's totally fine to play it without a capo. If you're not playing along with the original recording, just play it without a capo. It'll be a little bit lower to sing. But if you're a real beginner and learning this song, you probably don't want to be singing and playing at the same time either. That's definitely tricky. You want to start off with just keeping it really, really simple when you start. And this could be one of the first songs that you're ever learning on guitar. So really important to keep things simple when you're starting out and then gradually make them a little bit harder. But let's get to a close up and check it out. So the first step for beginners is going to be getting used to the chord changes. So starting off with the A and giving it a strum. And lifting off second and third finger, sliding first finger up a little bit, putting second and third fingers down, and strum again. Remember that the first finger is an anchor, so you want to try and keep that connected where you can. You don't have to later on, but it's a really good thing, especially when you're first starting out. If you're not sure about anchor fingers or any of that stuff, do go and check out the first module on my beginner's course. It's free over on the website. You just want to get used to making those chord changes, first of all. It's going to be real hard to play a song if you can't get the chord changes. So just working on that, hopefully you're doing a bit of work on your one minute changes anyway. But as soon as you've got the chord change, you can start having a go at playing the song. And it's loads of fun. So starting on the A, you're literally going to strum, strum, two, three, four, and strum, two, three, four, and change to the A, three, four, to the D two, three, four. If you're really new to playing guitar, you're probably going to find the chord changes take a little while. It won't be so instant. So don't leave it right until like beat four. Just strum the chord on beat one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Try and get the strum on beat one if you can. Okay, so start the chord change a little bit earlier and you're really aiming to try and get it on the beat one if you can. You might still find that really difficult. If you're really new to guitar, that's, that's fine. That's what happens. Making the chord changes is the biggest first hurdle that you have on guitar. Later on, it becomes rhythm. It's likely to be more of a problem. But the first, the first stumbling block everyone has is like, I can play the chords, now I've got to change between the chords to play the song. And that's why a tune like this with only two chords in it all of the way through is great practice changing between those two chords, and it gives you a fighting chance of actually being able to play it. Okay? So that would be your first step, is literally trying to strum on one. One, two three get the chords changing and then one two three four one two three four one two there lord it's the a old tune with a d chord and guitar then to a where do we take it from d two three well it's the a chord suits and D shiny cars, A. It's been the same way for D. And then it's A. We need to D. And then there's just a little bar, a couple of bars here where you play the A and the D chord. Back to A again. And somebody told me when D came to Nashville. Son, you finally got it made Oh, A made it here Where D, oh sure that you will But A 
think that Hank done it this deep. I think Hank done it this deep. And so on. Literally just strumming on beat one for the A, beat one for the D, practicing changing between those chords and trying to get the changes as fast as you can so that you can keep the strumming nice and consistent on beat one. If you're playing along with a back and track or you're playing along with the original recording, it'll probably sound pretty cool. You should have a good time, get that feeling of actually playing a song. And that's a really important vibe when you're starting off guitar. You know, I don't think that you should be uh, doing a lot of practice just on your own because you know, doesn't sound that great, but playing along with a back and track or an original recording is really, really helpful. Gives you that vibe, gives you the feeling of musicianship, and it'll really help your timing. The first big problem that most beginners face is changing between the chords, but then it becomes strumming and rhythm. So if you can start working on the rhythm at this early stage as well as your chord changes, that's a, a really, really fine idea. Now, once you're through strumming at once per bar, I'd recommend that you go to the four down strums per bar pattern because that's what you'll actually hear on the record. Really good thing, again, just listening to the original recording and hearing that one, two, three, four, change, one, two, three, four, change, one, two, because you just get the vibe. It's about developing your musicianship here. So starting on the A, two, three, four, A. Point, you're really trying to keep the strumming hand consistent. Remember, it should be like a pendulum going down and up evenly, not like flicking. It's not that, it's now trying to keep it the movement really relaxed, even, and consistent. And if you can do that, you, you're playing like the part off the record. And I'm all tuned to fiddle and guitar. Where do we take it from? Now, I must say, if you're going to do the whole tune like that on your, on your own, it might start to sound a little bit samey. So you probably want to break it up, actually, by using some of that single strumming, maybe starting with that. Then the second verse, start going, and then I came to Nashville. That, you, know, you can change it up a little bit. So if, even if you alternate it between those two, it's going to keep it a little bit more interesting for the listener. So key takeaways if you want to learn this song. Cap on the second fret, A and D chords, working on the transition between those two chords, starting off with just one strum on each chord and trying to get your strum on beat one if you can. Okay, you might find, especially the very first few times you try it, that the chord change will take a little bit too long to be able to do that. But aim for it. Try. Try and force yourself. Put yourself under a bit of pressure. Sometimes that kind of pressure can be really good to help your fingers and your mind speed up those chord changes. It's the first big battle you've got to overcome. Only thing that's going to sort it out is practice. Is doing it. So just do it. Backing tracks, playing along with the original recording. Really, really good idea. So do go and check out my app. Loads of exercises, loads of great songs for beginners that just use the A and the D chords with backing tracks. I, I tell you, if you're going to get into learning guitar, learning the rhythm right at the beginning of forcing yourself to get them chord changes working for you is really good. Otherwise, the danger is going... Lord, it's the same old tune. Fiddle and guitar. Where do you take it from? Yeah. And that's okay. Like, you might find that you're doing a little bit of that anyway, but as soon as you can, you want to try and get that. The same old song tune. Fiddle and guitar. Even if the chords don't sometimes come out, you just keep the rhythm so da and the D do Trying to keep that rhythm consistent, even if the chords get a little bit wobbly, is okay. And if you go back and you like, oh, oh, oh no, where's it gone? D, no, keep going, get back to the A, come on. You know, when you're playing with a backing track, it doesn't stop if you miss the chords. So you have to kind of find your way. And that's a lot more what happens in the real world when you're playing songs. So these are the big deal points for you, if you if, especially if this is one of the first songs that you're ever learning on guitar. I hope you have a fantastic journey. Remember, there are loads more lessons and tips over on the website. Do go and check out my app. Don't want to sound too salesy, but it's really good. It really works playing along with tracks. So do go and check that out as well. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.